name is Richard Casper. I'm a Marine Corps veteran, and I teach the course here at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. This program started basically because after my injuries in war, I didn't know how to deal with myself. I came back, had a brain injury, my best friend was shot and killed. I didn't know myself at that point. Art has helped me by giving me a chance to have a voice again. I used to not be able to leave my house. I couldn't go talk to people. I would physically throw up and get sick. If you could be 0% that's committing suicide, 100% being the best you can be. After the Marine Corps, after being injured, I was at probably like a nine or a 10. And after this school, I was back to like 85% me. For people who may struggle like I did and didn't want to break out of the house and be like, I'm not sure if this is gonna work. I just want them to know my story and be able to come out here and learn with other combat vets how to do art and if they're looking for one more way, if they just come out here and give me a chance, it's going to be worth it. What we were aiming for is to express what we were dealing with, you know, when we were deployed and during our military career, where we literally get out of our element, go on this kind of like alternate reality to go back in time, think about what we went through and express it to other people. Just being exposed to different concepts of art like at the museum and some of the contemporary art we saw. Um, that's what influenced me to try doing a performance piece for my last project. The opportunity to be at the school was just phenomenal. It was amazing. We could, at lunch, we could go and wander the halls of the museums and that was, that was pretty awesome. I think the hardest part was actually talking about what I've been through with it was easy talking to Richard because he is a combat veteran and he has been through stuff I've been through. And My job was to you know, go find IEDs or find landmines or anti-personnel landmines and take them apart. And little did I know, I was putting that stuff inside me. At first it's a little hard to let yourself become vulnerable. Um, you won't really know what to do right away. It takes a couple days. I know for me it took a week. Being surrounded by a bunch of veterans that like know what combat feels like, knows the after effects of combat, knows how it feels to come home. It was really comfortable being here. They're gonna come to class like normal college students, treated like normal people, that know how to be like, I can be in college, I am a normal person, and I could live like everybody else lives. If even one of them chose to go to college and study art and has that artist brain to where it saved them, it's totally worth it. Hi everybody. Hope everybody's doing good. I am uh, Mrs. Zoe F5 and we are continuing a acrylic pour series of geode paintings today. So today we're going to do it all in uh, blues and add some lapis stones to the canvas. Um, so I have some stones here. Might be a little hard to see in that cup. But lapis lazuli is a very vibrant blue. We're going to do it just like a contemporary acrylic pour painting. And now I'm going to mix these paints um, with a painting medium, Floetrol and some water. Uh, I'm not going to add silicone to it because I don't want cell development necessarily. Uh, and then we're going to pour paint all over this canvas and make a gigantic mess. <laughs> Which is fun. I like making messes. Um, so I'm going to start by mixing my paints. <coughs> I think we're going to flood the canvas first with a really bright, true blue. Um, this is just primary blue. Uh, and then we're going to add details in all of these colors that I have here. I've got a metallic light blue. That's an ice blue. Uh, I've got a standard light blue. I've got a metallic black that we're going to add 
to this real blue, which is more of a navy, because I want to darken it up a little bit, some white and some metallic gold so that we can get some nice lapis looking effects in there. <coughs> I'm going to start by pouring my paint in the medium, uh, which is what I said before, Fluotrol, into my cups. So my basic recipe that I've settled on is about five parts Fluotrol, one part paint, and one part water. And then when I do add silicone, um, I add about two to four drops. So not very much silicone, but we're not doing that today because like I said, I don't want cell development. So we're going to stick with just paint. And I've got these lined up so that I don't forget which color is which, since some of my colors are very similar. But I have some in metallics and some not. And I don't want to confuse the two. Hey, Miss Maybe. Thursday, my creative ets day. I love this day. I like doing this on creative ets. It makes me happy. All the the lovely paint noises. <laughs> Sorry. So speaking of Miss Maybe. I was watching her stream today on Twitch and she was talking about how she came to do the art that she works on and what she does. Man, that's a pretty blue. And uh, I asked her permission to share her story with you today. I was telling my husband about what she was saying on her stream. And he was like, you should share that on Creative Ed. So I reached out to maybe and asked her permission. Because I think it's a really, really, it's a, it, isn't that a gorgeous blue? It's just primary blue, but it's just, I love the Liquitex paints. They're my favorite. And at some point in my life, that'll probably be the only acrylic paint I ever use. I'm just not there yet, but we'll get there because it's definitely, they are by far my favorite paints. Um, so maybe, like many people, Miss Maybe, uh, has anxiety attacks. And so she struggles sometimes. So at some point, I don't know, months ago, <laughs> her and I were having conversations about what I do, right? She was talking about maybe I should do what you do. Maybe I should do some art. And I was like, yeah, definitely. It's amazing, right? It's helped me in a lot of ways. It's This is a little thin. Um, it helps to calm your mind, helps to clear your head, helps to give you clarity, helps you to, to be able to, to think and process things a little easier. Um, so maybe thought about it and decided that she wanted to uh, live stream art. 
and she was going to do uh, some coloring and um, something called diamond paintings, which is really, really cool. It's like a bunch of teeny tiny little rhinestones, thousands of them that uh, create a painting that looks very much like a rhinestone version of embroidery, right? Little teeny tiny dots that all make this really, really pretty painting. Uh, and so she started doing that. And today she was talking about the effects of that. She said that she used to have anxiety attacks really, really frequently, but since she's been doing this, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, I think you've been, it's about two months now. Has it been two months? Maybe three? That since she's been working in, in her particular medium, <laughs> her she's only had like a couple of anxiety attacks too. Yeah, so she's only had two anxiety attacks in two months, which for her is a phenomenal thing, right? It's, as she described it today as life-changing which is amazing. Um, I mean, it's, it's amazing that something as simple as, well, it's not simple, is it? But making one change, deciding that you're going to um, do something creative that helps to tell your story, that, that helps you to process through what's going on in your life can dramatically change your life in that way. Um, of course, maybe is very humble about it. Uh, but she's done a lot of work. Done a lot of work that has made a vast improvement in her life, and that's awesome. Um, and I genuinely, I called it a testimony today. I would like to tell your testimony, because that's what it is, right? I didn't do the work for you, maybe you did it all. And you should own that because there are people that go lifetimes and struggle with it and it's amazing that you took that step and did it. Um, but I wanted to share that with you guys on, look at this blue, on this channel today because I just really, I wanted you to know that the first step is hard, right? to figure out, you know, okay, so do I paint? Do I sketch? Do I write poetry? Do I sing songs? Do I, what do I do, right? <laughs> Get a coloring book for grownups. Get a pencil and paper. Get watercolors. Get a, a kid's wallet watercolor set. You literally can start with anything. It doesn't matter where you start because you can always change your mind later, right? <laughs> but that first step is sometimes hard. The belief, you know, that you can do it or that you're good enough because people believe that artist, that title artist is hard earned, right? That you can't just be an artist. And I think that the reality is, is that anybody can create something beautiful. People can create things that are really ugly too that have phenomenal value <laughs> because if it helps you then it's valuable. Look at that color. This painting is going to be bright. I love it. Okay now I don't want to lose track of which paint goes with what cup here. And it's easy for me to do when I have this many colors. So I'm going to set these over here. This needs to be mixed up more. Right? It is great. Um, but it's 100% doable. I mean, the beauty of Maybe's story not only is that she's been able to accomplish this and the fact that she's only had two anxiety attacks in two months has dramatically improved her life. That part of this is phenomenal. 
but I think the reason the reason I reached out and asked her uh, if I could share this, you know, after talking to my husband, um, because it was his recommendation, um, was because I think her story uh, is probably very, very similar to a lot of stories um, of the people watching Creative at Streams. I think that it's hard to decide what to do. Push the live button, right? Take the first step. Um, purchase that, that first kit if you're going to buy a kit to do art with, right? Um, where do you start that first step, the leap? Um, sometimes that's the hard part, right? But the reality is, is that we're great at overthinking it, particularly if you have anxiety. We're really good, really good, um, really good at overthinking things. I agree, Kyle, it is tough to put yourself out there. But you know what? You can start anywhere. I mean, you can create an art at home for years that's only for your benefit. I mean, the saying, you know, um, if you can reach out in the world and save a life, um, I can't remember how it goes now. If the only life you save is your own, it's worth it, right? That's so true. So yeah, the first step is hard, but what if you just take it? What if you just do it? Now the beauty of Maybe's story is that she decided to do this in front of people, like Kyle said, right? She decided to put her story out there and openly talk about her anxiety attacks and, and how difficult it's been for her and talk about her growth. So not only is she creating art and processing her story through art, um, but maybe is sharing that and making it possible for other people to do the same thing. And what a beautiful example, right? Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. And you know what? A big part of that, um, these live streams, though um, this is not everything that Creative Vets does. It's not even close, right? Um, but I do think that we have an opportunity to work together um, you know, all of us, uh, to reach out to people, tell these stories, and um, give people an opportunity uh, to do something for them, just for you. You can do it just for you. That's enough. All right. My paint is mixed. And we're going to flood this canvas. So this is the part where it gets messy. Because <laughs> we're going to pour this all over this canvas. And by the end of this, we'll have paint everywhere because I'm a messy person. And part of the fun in art for me is touching it and getting my hands messy and <laughs> right? I like that part. That part makes me happy. I mean, you know, life's messy. Why shouldn't my art be messy too, right?
<laughs> All right, let's move this around a little bit. So the nice thing about Floetrol using it as a painting medium, well, almost any painting medium, but is that it's self-leveling. <laughs> so as I do this and move this paint around, I get enough paint on the canvas that once we start adding all of our other details, <laughs> it'll be freer to move and it'll flow like I want it to, hopefully. We'll see how it goes. One of the fun things for me about painting like this is that you never really know how it's going to go because <laughs> the paint gets to do kind of what it wants to naturally do. Messy. And of course, I didn't pull out paper towels. <laughs> so here we are. All right. This is going to be such a pretty blue. Look how bright and cheery this is. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right. So we're going to mix up some different colors here. And I'm going to start by layering a few cups. And I'm going to do a dark layer, which is this metallic black, this darker blue, and metallic gold. And then I'm going to do a lighter one with these lighter metallics. And then we're going to do a mix of colors as well. This is going to become the center of our geode. And we're just going to move this around on the canvas a little bit. I'm going to have to stand up. If I miss some chat while I'm doing this, I'm sorry, but I promise I'll get right back with you. I want to keep that nice gold line, but I want this to be more of a half circle in the center. There we go. Oh, look, you can just see the back of my head. Well, that's fabulous. 
<laughs> Sorry about that. All right, now we're gonna come in with uh, some metallic blue. And white. And some more golds. <coughs> <clears throat> and you know what? I think I'm going to use a little bit of this background color as well and blend that in there and see if we can't get a nice kind of layered ring effect. So last in, first out when you do a dirty cap, right? So my last color is this same blue, but that gold's going to overrun it. So the first color out is going to be gold, maybe. looking here for here are those nice multicolor rings that you see on a geode right you guys ever seen a, a geode up close bring this down a little bit and pull it back up because we're going to spread that color out just a little Get that just to bear on the on stream. See some of those details for me in there? Look like lines of rock. When I get that paint off of my hands, um, I'll show you a nice example of one where you can see the, the lines. So now we're going to do a black gold, this light blue, this dark blue. I think I want more blues in here than this. There we go. And we'll bring this darker line along the outside here. I'm going to give this a little bit of room because we're going to go pretty wide on this one. I love how the color changes so dramatically it doesn't even look like it's the same line. So we're going to add a little line in there. We're going to add a couple little drips, little dots. And 
and we're going to expand this out. And this one we're going to expand out to be appreciably larger. Center. But I definitely want to stretch this out a little bit. So we're going to go back and do some more of this light coloration. We're just going to alternate through. tempted to just do a white and gold around there but we'll see how this one turns out well thank you maybe I've really enjoyed doing this series That's a lot of gold. That's a lot of gold and not a lot of other colors. What's going on there, paints? We want some stripies in here. All right, well, let's stretch this out. Woo! Apparently there's a lot of paint on this side of the canvas. More so than I thought there was.
Look at that color. So pretty. <laughs> oh. When your nose itches. And you can't scratch it. Alright, so we're going to do another little line of dark here. Just in this upper corner. And we're going to mirror that over here right on this edge. Down here on this little corner. And right across this one. There we go. I like it. I like it. It's very nice. Don't like that little bit of canvas there. So, how this works is we do this initial pour, right? And then this is going to dry. <laughs> And then once it dries, I'm going to go over it in uh, acrylic paint markers, which some of you may have seen me do already. And we're going to put all of the line work in this geode. What I'm doing right now is just moving this paint. I'm sorry about the back of my head, guys moving this paint down the sides of the canvas so I don't just have drip lines, but I actually have all of the canvas, even the sides, covered. And I'm just picking up the paint from the plastic here. And just tapping it on that canvas so that those sides are covered. Okay, I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to come back, back <laughs> and show you uh, how we're going to add the malachite, the actual stones, to this painting. But I can't have a ton of paint on my hands while I'm handling the stones or you won't see any of the coloration of the stones. Uh, and I've got so much paint on my hands you have to hear the water run. I apologize. I'm 
I'm telling you what, that Liquitex blue is gorgeous. All right. I mean, seriously, look at that color. That's amazing. I want to like pick it up and show you all the details because you can't see it. If I zoom in, can you see some of them? You can see some of them. See how this kind of clouds where the color lays over the other colors? Love how that looks. Right? So in, um, this is not my best example, but it's, it's the closest to me. So this is a slice of a carnelian geode, right? So see all this little, these little lines in here, all this detail, all of these lines here. So carnelian is an orange stone, but in reality, in a geode, you have oranges, yellows, browns, golds, some gray, silver colors, some whites, right? You have all of that color, and then of course the crystallization in the center of the geode. So. When I went to start this series, I wanted to see what colors were actually in the stones, right? What's really there? So in malachite, which is a green, that was the first one I did, there's all these different shades of green and like a coppery color, right? In amethyst, the second one I did, uh, there's lots of purples, but there's also clear crystal and kind of a pink. So I used crystal quartz, rose quartz, and amethyst in that one. And in malachite, there are, there's this super brilliant, brilliant, or lapis, lapis lazuli, not malachite, I apologize. This brilliant dark blue color. But if you look, you'll see there's whites in there. There's all these gold flecks, and there's black striations in there, right? So I wanted my canvas to represent those colors. Um, and I'll tell you what, we're doing pretty good, right? So I think... I think I have enough stones. I think we're going to lay a line of stones right along here. And I'm almost tempted to lay it right along that gold and black line that I laid out inside of this blue, but it would get difficult to follow the line as we go through there. And I like how this plain blue breaks things up. Now I could put it along our corners and run it right along this black as I've done with the others. And I'll show you guys the other two paintings that are finished. Um. <clears throat> I think I like the idea of doing it around the center and then those corners. Let's do that. Try and get my glasses on without dropping these rocks in this paint. So while this paint is wet, I'm going to lay these stones in it. It will not affix the stones, right? But I do have something called Dimensional Magic, which is a glue that uh, is very thick and it stands up, right? It's something that I use when I, um, when I want to put like a clear bubble over plastic, over a pendant. Um,
and these stones will be covered in that. But I want them in the paint because I want them to be part of the painting. So I like to put them in here while the paint is wet and have that paint move around them. Because I think they look more organically part of the piece than if you put them on after. When they're actually in the paint. And these are just little lapis lazuli chip beads out of my collection of jewelry supplies. I just dropped a stone right there. And I don't want it there. So we'll take it out of there. <laughs> I also really like the texture of having the real stones. I really think it adds something to the piece. I do like them on the black. You can hardly see them from there, huh? Where does my zoom take us? Can you see the center with the zoom? Nope, just the edge. It's not gonna help ya. <coughs> oh, we've got plenty of stones. So we're gonna pop just a few down here in this corner. And do the same thing over here. I'm gonna do some up here because we're just gonna keep going. Just like that. And then we're going to do this big corner over here. Thank you. 
So while this paint's still wet, I have some glitter that we're going to add to it to add just a little bit of shine to these same corners where we've added the stones. I don't know, I think it might need a little more in the center. I think it needs a little more in the center. Just a little cluster here in the center. Yeah, very nice. All right. <coughs> Let's grab some of this glitter and I think I would like I think I'd like to use some just black glitter and then we're going to use some really fine gold if I can get these off of these packages. Yeah. I do love the blue. You know, it's really funny because I'm not a huge fan of blue. They have any blue in my house. But I end up working with it all the time. Thank you. What I'm doing right now is just running little tiny bits of black glitter along this black and gold line. So because this painting will be clear coated, you'll catch this in the light as just little flecks. So it's not going to stand out, you know, like glitter normally does. But it does give you a nice 
uh, texture for one. And it catches the light every now and then underneath that clear coat. So it's real subtle. But I do think it gives it a little bit more the feel of stone, right, that we're going for. <clears throat> and of course the only way to do this part is in wet paint. not going to work any other way. <coughs> Excuse me. tell you guys my ceiling fan with this really really fine glitter not doing me any favors <laughs> should have thought of that before I started but we're gonna be all right There we go. It's nice. All right. It's very nice. So once your details are done and this dries, I'm gonna take acrylic markers and put all of the rest of the line work in it, right? Those little lines that I showed you on that slice of geode. Those all go in it next, and I use acrylic paint markers for that. And I'll show you an example of that here in just a second. But I wanna pick this up and show you uh, some of the details that we got here before I actually take it over to let it dry. So see that dark center there? The stones in it? And then this lovely color on color clouds that we've got. So all of those streaks, those are going to end up with striping on them, right? They're going to have line work done on them. But the details that we have in the paint already, really gorgeous. Like this is almost a marble look to it on this one side, which I'm really pleased with. So. You set this over here so it can dry a little bit. And we have quite a lot of paint. <clears throat> so I think we're going to take that, that paint and we're going to pour another canvas. Do you guys want to see me pour another canvas first or do you want to see the other two paintings that we've done in the series? What do you want to see first? Okay. We will do another pour then. So I'm just going to grab some cups to support this canvas so it's not laying in that paint. And grab my silicone because we're going to add some silicone to this so we get some cell development. And we're going to do a little 8 by 10 canvas. 
I may have enough uh, I may have enough paint for more than one canvas actually but let's start here I think we're going to start with the black. Some of this gorgeous blue. Some of this darker blue. Some gold. See if we've got enough black to do a little bit more here. And that's it for that. And we'll repeat with this. All there is of that. Back with our darker blue. We'll pick up, oh, we'll pick up the gold. This light blue, some dark blue, some of that metallic blue. And we'll start pouring some whites in here. I think I'm going to leave that last bit of lighter blue and I'm going to circle the outside of the canvas with it. Put just a couple of drops of silicone in this. Lay this around the canvas a little bit. Do the same thing with the white. All right, and now we're ready to pour. Look how cute it is in the cup. Look at all those little colors. All right, here we go. Let's see what we get.
going to help this along a little bit. Okay. Look at all those cells. <laughs> you see all these cells already developing? All these dots with all this color underneath it. We're going to use a little blowtorch here, and we're going to develop those further. I'm going to encourage that silicone to come to the surface and push the colors of those paints that are underneath up to the top. Just a minute. See that gold coming up all the way around here? It's really pretty. And there's all this white coming up underneath that brilliant blue. It almost looks like there's purple in here in the center it almost looks like it's a purple color and there's no purple in it whatsoever but that's what it looks like it's funny how it works out
this is really stunning. See if we can get a little bit more of that gold to come up. So there's a different difference in silicone, right? Is it creates this type of a look, which is dramatically different than what we just did on our last painting. All it takes is a couple of drops to change everything in your recipe like it's amazing. Yeah, the details in this is really lovely. You guys want a closer look? See all that pretty gold, that metallic gold coming up underneath? And that deep bluish purple color, which there's no purple in it, but here we are. really pretty. I like it. All right, once again, allow me to go wash my hands and I'll be right back. Thanks. Sorry about that. I was still muted. Tried to save you guys from having to listen to the bathroom sink and forgot to mute my, or unmute. <laughs> um, so we set that other one over there to dry and uh, I'm going to pick this up a little bit and then I'll pull over those other two geode paintings. and show you those. And then I think we're gonna talk about um, doing the next one, which I'm seriously considering doing in sunstone.
which is a orange stone with a flex of pyrite in it, gold. Oh, got paint on my desk. It's no bueno. As we've done this series, um, been talking to my community on Twitch about what to do next, right? Um, which stone they would like to do next, that kind of thing, which is what got us from malachite to amethyst to lapis lazuli. But this is a six canvas series. So since we have done uh, green, purple, and blue, I mean, we can do red, yellow, and orange, and then we'll have the primary and secondary colors, which would be kind of cool, right? So the first one we did is a malachite. So this has, like I said, I use something called dimensional magic. So if you look at this malachite, it looks wet, right? It looks like there's a whole river there. And I wanted to use that product in particular because I want it to stay with the stones and not bleed out to the rest of the painting. And then we have some um, bronze and black line work, right? And there's some glitter, some cellophane, little tiny cut up cellophane to give it some texture over here. And then lots of line work. All over it. So that we get that geode feel to the painting, right? And then we finished that one and the next week we worked on this amethyst one. So this is the one that has uh, clear quartz, rose quartz, and amethyst uh, stones in it. And again, I use that. Hello, beta cat. I use that dimensional magic so that they have that nice, wet, shiny look. Uh, but we got some really good details in the paint with this one and some nice line work that gives it some really great dimension out, dimensionality in there. My made up word that my husband makes fun of me about. So these are the first two in the series. The one we did today, <laughs> surprise cat, don't sit on the painting. Um, once it dries, we'll do this line work and then we'll clear coat it. Say hi to Beta. <laughs> um, and then we'll start working on the next one. So if we were to do sunstone, I can grab some sunstone and we can look at it. So if we did the next three in red, yellow, and orange so that we could 
finish out this primary and secondary colors. I could do one that looked like, well, here's a good example of sunstone. Thanks, Kyle. Can you guys see that? Doesn't want to focus on it. See those gold flecks in that orange stone? We could do one that looked like that. Sunstone, not a natural stone. So there's not a lot of variation in it. We could do carnelian, which is the same as the slice of geode that I showed you. Using, this is also carnelian. See how much that color varies? From dark to light and then that bright orange. We could do more carnelian and amber for an orange one, that would be pretty. Yellow would be more difficult. We'd almost have to do citrine maybe, because if we did one in amber, it would still be orange. Yellow would be difficult. Can you hear this cat purring on the mic? He sounds very loud to me. I put the mic closer to him, but he just attacks it when I do that. So I'm not sure if we'd be able to pull off yellow. I mean, I can do it with raw citrine. Can you hear him for <laughs> Hmm. Hey fish. Welcome, welcome. So if we did citrine, like this is raw citrine. Right? It's a barely a golden yellow color. It's got some browns in it. I like the idea of doing a carnelian and amber one that orange yellow color. Uh, hey fish, trying to decide what our next one should be, what our next geode one should be. We could do browns and do tiger's eye. That's an option. I think I've got some tiger's eye in here. Carnelian, I do like carnelian, but I'm a fan of carnelian in general. Um, yeah, I do, I have some tiger's eye. Tiger's eye is gorgeous because it's got all of these different, all these different golds and bronze and browns. Carnelian is, um, it's an orange, it varies a little bit, this is carnelian, <laughs> um, and the 
then this is a, these chips are brighter, brighter orange, but that's also carnelian. Yeah, it's very pretty. Hard for me to show you on camera. See those lines in it? It's the same, um, do you remember when you asked me about my coasters? I just showed one of these. This? That's carnelian. My coasters were cut from a carnelian geode. We could do carnelian next. That'd be fun. Uh, I've only got a half hour, so we're not going to get it done tonight. Exactly. Yep, lots of rings. Lots of rings in it. I really like how the lapis one is turning out. It's really pretty. I like the blues. Um, I can move the big one over here so you can see it real quick. <coughs> I'm painting the geode paintings, like this one that you see, <coughs> excuse me, right here. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm making a six-part series, so I started with a green malachite one, and then we did a purple amethyst. Tonight we did a blue lapis lazuli. Next we're going to do carnelian, which will be an orange color. Then maybe a uh, tiger's eye, um, which is browns. And I could do one in garnets. I have a bunch of garnets. But this is what we painted tonight. Let's just hope it doesn't drip on the cat because cleaning him is a pain when he gets paint on him. So we painted this. And once it's dry, we'll do the line work on it, just like the other two. And then this little one we did as an extra. It's got some really cool details in it. Look at how that color came up. You're just going to guess all the games until you guess what he's playing? PlayStation. So yeah, that's what we worked on tonight. And then next week, Um, here on Creative Vets, we'll probably be finishing up um, the Carnelian Geode and doing the line work on it. So you guys will get to see that next week. And tonight we shared um, Maybe's story, which is wonderful. And I really appreciate her letting me do that. I was under the impression that we were going to do that Friday because it's too late for lemons, OEF. So I told her that we'd be doing it Friday.
exactly. That's what we'll be doing. <laughs> That's all right. Okay. I don't know what that is, fish. I don't know that I've ever seen it. So, once we finish this geode series, Ah, I see. Yes, he's very happy right now. He was upset when I put all the paints on the table because he knows he can't get up here until I'm done. So he was upset about that. Um, so once we finish this geode series, which tonight we're just about halfway done, uh, I think um, I'm going to start working on on creative Ets on this channel not my personal channel on twitch uh, i think i'm going to start working on a vintage jewelry uh, series so something that i did when uh, oef5's grandmother passed away was i inherited a bunch of her old costume jewelry from the 50s and 60s and I wanted to make a memorial piece, um, something that I could wear, right? Something that was useful uh, to me and that that jewelry could still be loved and I could remember her. Uh, and it was also a way for me to process that death and um, find something happy in that sadness. So I made this necklace for myself. And those are all vintage pins, earrings, a whole bunch of different things, right? And uh, I took them all apart, put them all back into pieces. No, don't bite it. And um, wire wrap them together. So I made this whole wire frame on the back that holds all of those pieces together. Not really pretty, but it does lay flat and it doesn't scratch me. I don't want to hit my mic while I do this, but this is what it looks like on, right? Yeah, quite a few hours in making the framework and doing the layout to make this look right. Um, so that it looks like a single piece instead of a bunch of old pieces. So once we finish this geode series, um, what I'd like to do um, is a month-long series on taking vintage pieces and making them into memorial pieces, right? Yeah, and I've, I've worn this necklace several times, not with this shirt, obviously, but several times to work or to events, different things like that. Uh, and people always comment on it, and I'm able to say, this was my husband's grandmother's pieces, uh, and this is my way to remember her. <laughs> In Minecraft, okay, oh yeah. Um, so what I'd like to do, because I do think that people, uh, I think it's common that when someone passes, you inherit things like this, right? And then don't know what to do with them. So I thought it might be something nice to do on this channel. Um, so I think we're going to be doing that. We'll do a month-long series, and we will make some uh, necklaces, some bracelets, uh, some different things 
and uh, create wire wrap frames. I'll show you exactly how I lay them out to actually create a design and we'll go step by step uh, every Thursday because I, I stream on this channel Thursdays at 4 o'clock, right? Eastern, 3 p.m. Central, and you can walk it back from there. Um, but that way we'll go step by step uh, and we'll do a whole series of creating pieces, memorial pieces like this. So I have underneath this table where my paintings are drying a tote, as in big, huge rubber storage tote full of vintage jewelry that I just received from an estate. So <laughs> we'll be going through that and picking out pieces and putting them together and making pieces like this. So that'll be coming up uh, here in a couple of weeks because we're going to finish this geode series first. Um, and then we'll, we'll start that series. <coughs> Which should be fun. Um, one of the first streams I ever did for Creative Vets was making jewelry, so... <coughs> <coughs> So sorry, I can't stop coughing. Um, so it'll be nice to revisit that because we haven't done that for a while. We've done a lot of different things. Um, I don't think we've ever had a full stream of just petting the cat, but you know, here we are. A picture of the painting that I did for MP. Um, I'm going to be honest, I don't know if I took one. Uh, MP did put a picture of it in my, in my Discord. Um, in my Discord, in the channel, Selfies with Mrs. is a picture of it because he hung it in his kitchen and put a picture of it there, or I put it there from his or whatever. But yeah, that's in there. I'll tell you what, you know, my favorite part of that painting is the tree. <laughs> it's so dark, but he wanted a dark, scary, right? He, he, he wanted a really dark, scary storm. That would be Creative Vets Discord. That's not mine, but Creative Vets Discord is great too. It does get confusing having me on multiple channels. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure you did. I'm pretty sure you did. I don't know. But I'll tell you what. I can find it and just DM it to you if you like. I can do that. You want to join my Discord? Okay. You are more than welcome to join my Discord, Fish. Then you can be part of the sub giveaway that's coming up uh, tomorrow. So, good time to do it. Hang on just a second and I will get you the link. I gotta pull everything over here now. Uh, 
Boom. There you go, fish. It's the picture of Beta. Yes, it's my avatar's Beta Cat. I thought he was, but you know, whatever. I don't know. Follow that second link, you'll find MP's picture. So that's there. So, yeah, sub giveaway starts tomorrow. No links have been posted. I did DM him. I don't want to post my Discord and create a bet stream. That's that's okay. I know. I got it. We're good. <coughs> We're good. All right, so huge thank you to Miss Maybe for letting me share her story tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, I think it's important that we uh, that we really understand the impact that art can have, and maybe is a perfect example of how it can absolutely change your life, even if it doesn't impact anybody else. But the ripples. From Maybe's story, how many people that will impact is amazing to me. Um, but like I said before, even if you're the only one you save, that's one person. And that's important because you have value. So hopefully that helped today. Um, I love making art with you guys. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the jewelry series. If there is something in particular that I do that you want to see more of, whether it be jewelry, wood burning, or um, painting, whatever, uh, please let us know because I'm happy to do that. We've also worked on <laughs> breathing exercises, keychains, refocus boxes. Like we've done all kinds of stuff on this channel. Uh, and I'm happy to revisit any of those topics again as well. So just let me know and we'll do it. So with that, I am going to uh, wrap this up. But thank you so much for hanging out with me. Uh, I appreciate every one of you. I really, really do. Um, and I really hope that you're able to, uh, if you haven't started yet, take that first step. Um, and I really encourage you to just just make it a tiny one. Just take one little one, right? Just grab a pencil and draw something. Write a few lines. Um, whatever it is that you want to do. Or maybe the first step for you is just deciding how you want to do it. Making a plan, right? That's a good first step too. But it's your story and it's your journey and you get to decide. And nobody gets to decide for you. So thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you. <clears throat> like I said before, I'm Mrs. OEF5. Obviously, the Mrs. 2 OEF5 that's in the chat. Um, I, will be, uh, I will be back here 4 p.m. Eastern on uh, next Thursday and every week, hopefully. Thank you so much, you guys. I appreciate all you. Um, and uh, if I don't see you here on Thursday, then I'll probably see you around Twitch. You can always come visit me. And if you have questions or requests or anything like that, uh, I'm happy to take those at any time. So I will see you guys next week. Stay safe. Take that first step.
We are a nonprofit that is helping combat disabled veterans heal through the arts and music. Our art programs in Chicago and California help combat disabled veterans tell their story through art. We enroll them into the best art institutes in the country. We pay for their tuition, their housing, their food all three weeks so that they can finally tell their story through art. We also bring combat disabled veterans to Nashville, to places and rooms like this here at the Grand Old Opry to tell their story for the first time with pro songwriters all about the things that they went through that they've never been able to talk about before. These programs have been extremely successful in helping veterans combat their PTSD. Right now, Creative Ed's has more veterans applying for our programs than we do funding. So if you can go to creativeets.org and donate, we would appreciate it.